This fire started approximately 3.30 on Sunday, uh, August 9th. Uh, the cause is currently under investigation. Uh, it has been burning steadily for the last couple days. Some very big runs. It's a large wildland area, but there is some interface, which means that there are dwellings back in there. They called an inner zone area. There are ranches and residences that are threatened. All the residents in the Jerusalem Grade Road area have been evacuated. It's a mandatory evacuation order. Uh, there is some concerns to some of the communities to the west of the fire, uh, and it all depends on what kind of fire behavior we have today, but crews are hitting the ground hard trying to get this contained. Obviously, when we issue an evacuation order, our number one priority is public safety. And of course, we'd like people to, to honor those evacuation orders. Some residents do choose to stay. We can't compel them to go, but we do everything we can to persuade them to go. One of the problems that we have, though, is that when you have residents back there, for them, it's a decision to stay. For us, it's a duty to act. Like I said, number one priority is, is, is public safety. And uh, it, it raises our anxiety level because we know that there might be people back in threatened areas. So it complicates our operations. That's why we really need people to heed those evacuation orders. There's lots of rye grass and that acts as like almost like a wick to a candle. You get embers into that, it carries fire very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And then what it does is it gets into the brush, into the chaparral or uh, you know, into the trees, and that's called a ladder. So it'll ladder up, it'll climb up into the trees. And since the trees are dry, like this one is a dead pine tree, all right, very easily the, the fire could carry into the tree and it explosively burns. That's, that's been characteristic of this whole incident is explosive fire behavior because everything is so dry. This homeowner did a very good job on doing their weed abatement, which means they've mowed and cut and weed whipped all the flashy fuels, the grasses around their property. They've limbed their trees up. So this is a pretty good example of, of good weed abatement. For us, that, that gives us a chance. For that, that gives us a chance, uh, a better chance to, for structure protection. See, this right here is an excellent example of what we call ladder fuels. You have you have this really dry rye, all right, that carries fire very easily. It ladders up into a dead tree like this one. It can ladder up into a healthy tree. And then you, if you look at this, totally dry and dead. And this, when you get a wind on this and low relative humidities, it will burn very, very <laughs> readily. There are dead needles and dead limbs in this tree. So, you have this kind of combination of pine trees, oak trees, flashy fuels, and chaparral. And you combine all those together, you have variable fire. Some places it's really intense, some places you can get a handle on it. But that's what firefighters have been dealing with in this area. And you can see how hard it is. Sometimes we like to use roads as containment lines if we can, all right? But with winds and, and, and topography, it really makes it challenging. We have a four-year drought. The fuels are tinder dry, and and it, it, it just we've had one incident after the other up here, and the residents have had to go through evacuations, seeing all the equipment, seeing the large head of smoke. It does create a lot of anxiety, but rest assured, we have large number of resources. We have 1,100 people out here, all kinds of equipment: engine companies, bulldozers, aircraft. We're doing everything we can in our suppression efforts, and we're trying to get this thing contained.